How are you, everyone? My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, a lecturer in quantitative analysis. Welcome to Hypothesis Testing, Lesson 1. Now, you'll recall that in the probability, especially uh, the uh, last lessons, uh, I introduced the inferential statistics, where we have two ways of uh, deducing information from samples. We have the estimation and we have the hypothesis. So I covered the statistical estimation and then uh, we are going to look at the hypothesis testing. It is after we have made an estimation that you want to test whether that estimation or uh, that uh, statement that you are trying to estimate, whether it is uh, correct or not correct. We just want to test whether that uh, statement of belief is uh, uh, maybe holding uh, maybe our um, analysis or not. Now, in hypothesis testing, Hypothesis is a claim or a statement about a population which can either be true or false. It is a testable belief, opinion, or assertion. Sometimes we require to make statistical decisions about a population from a sample data. We, however, need to test the difference between value of stati sample statistic and the population parameter and ensure that the difference is not significant. Very true. That um, we would want to test. Remember, we are uh, in, in, in sampling theory, looking at a sample and then uh, trying to connect with the uh, population. We say that it's not going to be simple for you to do census or for population. But when you take a small sample, you can be able to make some inferences uh, concerning the whole population. And that is what uh, we uh, require. And it is because of that that we would want to test whether what we are getting from the sample is exactly what the population holds. There are two types of hypotheses, namely null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So you have null hypothesis. So with this we denote it by HO or H0. Then you have alternative hypothesis. This we denote it as a H1. So HO or H0 and H1. That is null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statement about the population which is always assumed to be true unless proven otherwise. That is accidental out of fluctuation of sampling. The statement involves a population parameter, for example, the mean, the variance, or proportion. If null hypothesis is found to be false through a mathematical test, it is rejected and therefore alternative hypothesis accepted. And if null hypothesis is true, then we accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis and vice versa. Now we're saying that um, this statement we are referring to as null is a statement that uh, we believe to be true. Um, and this statement must be testable. Otherwise, uh, it is not going to be a an, uh, an, uh, null hypothesis or will not be a hypothesis if it cannot be tested. Now, if, for example, like uh, in a group of, uh, in, in a class, if uh, we take a sample and uh, we determine or we get the mean of the sample is, let's say, 65%, then we can make a statement that uh, this portrays the performance of the entire class or the entire school. Now, you see that statement is testable because we can use that sample, get uh, all the, in, in, um, maybe, analysis and inferences and make that kind of conclusion. So that statement which is believed to be true 
and it is testable, is what we're calling the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the other, is maybe uh, an alternative or either uh, the opposite of that. Where, if you are going to reject that statement, which one then do you accept? Like if you say that the population mean is 65%, then if not 65%, then you must have another alternative, which um, would either be, if not 65%, it is either greater or it is less than 65%. But the key thing here is that um, it is testable, at the same time, uh, it is believed to be true with a good percentage. In any case, we said in the distribution that uh, we take 90%, 95%, or 99%. So a statement which you believe to be like uh, true, 99%, that means it's only 1% that uh, you may reject. And therefore, null hypothesis should be supported by the uh, degree of confidence, which is confidence level. And therefore, alternative hypothesis will be supported by the significance level. Types of hypothesis testing. Number one, two-tail or non-directional test. Number one is two-tail or non-directional test. So two-tail test, or otherwise known as a non-directional test. This is a test where the rejection of null hypothesis can fall on either side of the sampling distribution. It normally involves the unequal sign in the alternative hypothesis and easily identified by such basic terms like not equal to, different from, unequal, different, etc. Now we say that um, the two-tail test is a case where the rejection of the null hypothesis actually is um, on both sides of our distribution. And therefore, uh, when we are setting a hypothesis, we are going to set a hypothesis with the following uh, equation. That if our null hypothesis, which is H0, assuming that we are testing, our statement is about the mean. You know, we have said that we have parameters like a mean, we have uh, the uh, proportion. Assume that we talk of mean, the population mean. And note that I've already said that the, uh, the hypothesis is set with population parameters, not with sample statistics, only with population parameters. So when you talk of the mean and its population, then you first talk of uh, this, um, the mu sign. So we would say that um, this equals to, that one, then you have alternative hypothesis is that this is not equal to mean one. Now, this what it means is that if, for example, you're talking about a mean of the population that equals to this uh, kind of um, uh, estimate, then this statement can be tr is true. And if not true, then we are going to have some errors. But this statement taking it to be true. If we find out through mathematical operations that uh, the mean is not this uh, st statistic here, the, our estimate, then what will be the mean? Then the mean can either be greater than this or less than this. So you see now we are not giving direction. We are saying that it's, it's not. So it's not equal. So not equal means it may be greater than or may be less than. So that's why we say it is non-directional. And it is two-tailed because as we come up with our distribution, let me draw the distribution. Do the distribution. That we are going to have our rejection region. that this our null hypothesis is supported at the center here by the confidence level. So this being the confidence level 
and this is a